everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're going to be talking all about Newton's laws of motion. Let's go ahead and start with the first law. It states an object at rest will stay at rest and an object of motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Really, we call this the law of inertia. So what is inertia then? It's just the resistance of an object to change speed or direction. In other words, it doesn't want to turn anywhere and it doesn't want to speed up or slow down, right? It just kind of wants to go the way it's going and not change at all. So objects that have a lot of mass will have a lot of inertia and vice versa. So if the uh, object has a little bit of mass, it will only have a little bit of inertia. Now let's look at some examples of the first law. If we're in outer space and we throw a baseball, that baseball is gonna continue in the same direction at the same speed forever until it is acted upon by an unbalanced force. For example, if it hit like a comet or an asteroid or something like that, right? Um, another example would be an object at rest. If we have a picture frame and we put the picture frame on a table, that picture frame is gonna be at rest and it's gonna stay at rest until it's acted upon by an unbalanced force. Say you knock it over with your purse or something like that, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and look at the second law of motion. It says, the acceleration of an object depends on the mass and force applied. In other words, we can put this in an equation form and we can say F equals MA in other words, force equals mass times acceleration. So this is going to involve us to do a little bit of math, right? Um, I went ahead and put it in the triangle. Remember that if you have a variable on top of another one, we're just going to divide. And if they're side by side, we're just going to multiply. But it's really the relationship that we need to understand here. So let's look at some real life examples to get this. If we're at a grocery store and we're pushing around an empty basket, we hardly have to have any force pushing around that basket and it's gonna accelerate quickly because our mass is so low. But once we start filling it up and we have a full basket, um, it's gonna require us to push with more force and it's gonna accelerate slower. Um, same thing for us having a book bag. If we have an empty book bag, we hardly have to use any force to pick it up and to carry it around and we can accelerate very quickly. But if we go ahead and we fill that with textbooks and other items and it becomes a very high mass, it takes a lot of force for us to lift it, carry it around, and it's going to require us to accelerate slower because of that, okay? Newton's third law states, for every action, it has an equal and opposite reaction. So this is the law of action-reaction. Um, it's actually my favorite one, so let me show you why. Uh, if we look at a rocket ship, rocket ships has the thrusters on the bottom, and those thrusters will put all of the force in a downward motion, right? With all those burning gases. But because it's going downward, and Newton's law states that it's equal and opposite. Well, opposite of down is up, right? And if it's shooting down with those thrusters at such a force, that equal, the equal force will shoot upward. That is how the rocket ship can go through the atmosphere into outer space because it's shooting with that much equal and opposite force. Super weird to think about, right? That we do things a little bit backwards. If you're jumping, you need to push downward on the earth so that it can push back up on you and you can jump in the air. And that's so strange to really think about. But when you start doing things, you can see it and you're like, wow, this is backwards. This is crazy. Um, another example is rowing a boat. So if you're rowing a boat, in order to go forward, we have to push our oar backwards, right? And if we're going backwards, we have to push our oar forwards in order to move the correct direction in our boat. So you're going to see all these kinds of examples in your everyday life, you guys, now that you've heard this law. So I hope this was so helpful to you guys learning Newton's laws. Thank you all so much for watching. If you all enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button and subscribe to my channel to see all the new science explained videos that are coming out. Thank you all so much. Bye, everybody.